This video is the fourth of a six video series where we are building a computer vision game that you can play using hand gestures. So far we have loaded Google's media pipe model for hand detection and have been able to move our tiny rocket through the infinite shower of meteors. I do recommend that you check out earlier videos to get a context. You will find the playlist link under the video or on my channel's homepage. In this video we will implement collision detection. If you want a quick and simple collision detection logic then go to the timestamp displayed on the screen right now. So in the page.tsx file in the home component i'm going to get a reference of the rocket container which we are moving using the left attribute so i'm going to write ref is equal to rocket ref and i'm going to define it at the top of the component use ref snippet rocket ref and i'm going to initialize it with null value and i'll import it i'll also define a state variable for the coordinates of the rocket component so state snippet i call it rocket and i'll set the type as any and keep it undefined initially now i'll go to the set hand results function and remember this function is being called by the hand recognizer component 30 times a second so if i go to the hand recognizer component here it receives that function as an input property and it is calling that 30 times a second in this process detection function so going to the set hand results function right at the bottom i'm going to write set rocket and here i'm going to get the reference of the rocket component rocket ref dot current and i'll get the bounding rectangle using the method get bounding client rect now this function does exist as it is an html elements reference but typescript does not recognize it so i'm going to typecast it as any now if i go to the documentation of this function mdn web docs so you can see this function returns for a html element the left right top and bottom attributes so using this we can find out the position as well as the width and height of the container which will be used in our collision detection logic so back in our code we are setting that as the rocket state variable and this is going to make sure that the rocket's position is updated 30 times a second now we're going to pass these coordinates of the rocket to each boulder component and let each boulder decide whether their own coordinates are colliding with that of the rocket or not and if it is colliding then they will raise a collision event using a callback function so for that i'm going to use a typical generic name so i'm going to call it what and so what so so what is going to be the collision handler and the what is going to be in our case the rocket so this is going to detect for the rockets collision and so what is going to be the function or the callback function that each boulder component will call when it detects a collision so i'll write it collision handler and i'll create this function const collision handler is equal to an arrow function so here i'm just going to write after collision because this is going to be called after a collision is detected i'll come back to this logic later let me go ahead in the boulder component first and detect the collision detection logic first so i'll go to the boulder component and here i'll have to define these properties what i'll define it as any which will receive the rocket components coordinates and so what is going to be an arrow function which returns a void and we'll destructure them here what and so what now we could set up a regular interval here within this component that is to say that for each boulder component there will be an interval created which will detect for collision every few milliseconds but i'm going to use a trick here so for the triggering of the detection logic i'm going to rely on the lifecycle hook of the react itself to trigger the detection logic so i'm going to write a use effect hook and i'm going to set a dependency variable as when so that variable will be receiving as well as part of the input property and here i'm going to write our detection logic in fact i'm going to call this function as detect collision now this when parameter we want to receive as part of our input property and whenever that parameter changes this is going to detect the collision so let me go ahead and first define this as a parameter when as any i'll destructure it here so what we have to do here is that we need to identify a suitable parameter that when changes should trigger the detection logic and pass that parameter as input property into each boulder now there are many ways of doing this i could ideally generate a random number every time hands are detected and pass that number here that way it would make sure that whenever hands are on the screen that parameter changes and the direction logic kicks in for each boulder 
So let me do that. I'm going to go to the page.tsx file and I'm going to create a state variable here detect collision trigger and I'm going to keep it undefined. Now in the set hand results function, which is called 30 times in a second, and inside this degrees check so when the degrees are valid so that means the hand is on the screen and before we are setting the rocket left i'm going to say set detect collision trigger as math dot random so i'll have to make this type as number and i'll initialize it with zero and here in the boulder components input property i'm going to also pass along with what and so what i'm also going to pass when that is going to be the detect collision trigger now let's go ahead and create this detect collision function in each of these boulders so first we'll have to take a reference of each of these boulders container so i'm going to write ref is equal to boulder ref and i will define this use ref boulder ref i'll import this now i'll create this function here const detect collision so as a first step we are going to check if boulder ref dot current exists this is going to exist this is mostly to satisfy TypeScript so that we don't have to use assertion operator in our upcoming codes. So I'm going to write const boulder, which is going to be the bounding rectangle of the boulders container. So boulder ref dot current dot get bounding client rect. And here as well, I'll have to typecast it as any. So now we have two rectangles. One is this boulder and that is basically the what, which is the container of the rocket component. So using these two rectangles, which are nothing but the left, right, top and bottom attributes of these rectangles, we can simply write a collision detection logic. So here is a quick and simple collision detection logic between two rectangles, which we use in our game. Let's say there are two boxes on a plane. Now these boxes can be of any size and shape. It doesn't really matter. Also, there are two axes on this plane, the X axis and the Y axis. The X axis is measured as usual from left to right using left attribute of an HTML element while the Y is measured in the opposite direction that is to say not from bottom to top the usual direction of measurement of Y axis in math world rather in web pages they are measured from top of the page towards the bottom using the top attribute of HTML elements. Now for those boxes to collide their edges should overlap in both axes that is on the X axis their inner edges should cross and on the y axis as well, their inner edges should overlap and cross. Now, let's take one axis at a time to determine the condition of collision on that axis. And then we can apply the same condition on both the axes to determine the final collision condition. So let's take the x axis. Now, I'll not call the edges as left edge or right edge, as depending upon which box we are talking about, it will change. To give an example, for the left box, the inner edge that is closer to the other box is the right edge of it, while for the right box, its inner edge is the left edge that is closer to the other box. I'll be comparing the outer edge with the corresponding outer edge and inner edge with the corresponding inner edge. Let's take the boxes in their current position. If we take the box one, its outer edge is on the left side of the outer edge of the box two and its inner edge is also on the left side of the inner edge of box two. That means there is no collision. But if the inner edge were to cross over and if the inner edge were on the right side, keeping the condition for the outer edge the same, then there would be a collision on this axis. So we can say that for collision to happen on X axis, the outer edges and the inner edges both cannot be on the same side. That is to say, if for a box, the outer edge is on the left side of its counterpart, then the inner edge of the same box should be on the right side of its counterpart. So if we proceed to write the condition of collision in code, then we can start using the box one or box two, it doesn't really matter as we'll get the same condition. So we can say for collision to happen on the X axis, the left of box one, if it's on the left side of the right of box two, here lesson sign suggests it's on the left side in the comparison. Then for collision to happen, the right of box one should be on the right side of the left of box two. Here greater than sign suggests it's on the right side in the comparison. We can do the same analysis for top and bottom attributes as well on the y axis to find the same set of conditions. And as we said, for these two boxes to collide, they need to collide on both the axes, meaning all these conditions should be true. And that right there is our collision detection logic between two boxes. So I'm going to write const did collide is equal to boulder dot left less than what, which is the rocket component of dot right and boulder dot right 
is greater than what dot left so this is basically talking about the outer edges of the rectangles if for the first rectangle the outer edge on the left side that means that for the same rectangle the inner edge has to be on the right side of the inner edge of the other rectangle that means on that specific axis these two rectangles have crossed that is the x-axis and for the y-axis we'll also have to do the same thing that is boulder dot bottom if it's greater than what dot top and boulder dot top is less than what dot bottom now we're going to check if it did collide then we are simply going to call the callback function which is the so what so i'm getting a compilation error here uh, so that is because uh, i'll have to initialize it with a null value so let me do that that way that error goes away and let me go to the page.tsx file and then here in the collision handler let me just console log to see if our collision is detected so i'm going to write collision now let me test this app so let me stop the other console logs that is coming from the hand recognizer component if i test we can see that we are printing collision on the console log but what is happening is that for each boulder itself we are detecting multiple collisions so the reason is that when first collision is detected and it is rubbing against that boulder since the collision detection is happening 30 times in a second for all those times when it is rubbing against this boulder it is printing collision so what usually happens you can see in arcade games is that whenever there is a collision there is usually an invincible period of one second or two seconds during that time no collision is detected that is true even for the same uh, boulder as well as for any other boulder that it might collide with so let me go ahead and do that we want to create an invincible period after the first collision within which there will not be any collision detected after which we will start uh, rather we will resume detecting collision so in the page.tsx file at the top i'm going to define another parameter let is invincible is equal to false and we are going to say if is invincible or rather if it's not invincible then we want to console log the collision we'll set is invincible to true and we'll set a timeout for let's say 1500 that is one and a half seconds after which we'll say is invincible is equal to false now if we test we can see that we are detecting only one collision and after which even if we collide with multiple boulders we are not detecting any collision and only after one and a half second has passed we'll be able to see another collision so let me try to get two boulders at a time but you will see we are detecting only one collision within that one and a half second period now in the collision detection logic since we are using a rectangular container but the boulders are actually round so we will add some kind of cushion around these boulders where there will not be any collision detected so what i want is that about 30 pixels of padding within that container of the boulder itself uh, where if this rocket component gets a narrow escape then there will not be any collision and that you will see in many arcade games that if the rocket gets a very close escape in most of the times the collision is not counted so what i'm going to do is that for boulder component since we measure from the left side of the screen whenever we want to add a cushion for the left we're going to add some pixels on the left we add and since we measure from the left side of the screen so that is why for right we want to reduce that amount of pixels and since again we measure from the top so for bottom we'll be reducing that much pixel and for top we'll be adding that much pixel that way we are adding some amount of cushion within that boulder container in which there will not be any collision and only in case of a full frontal collision with these boulders the collision will be counted as a collision that's all for this video in the next video we'll be building game information overlay where we'll be showing screen flashes and all those things to notify the user about the collision we'll also want to build a count of remaining lives and add sound effects for each collision but that we will take up in our upcoming videos if you learned something new in this one then leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one